Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So I've come out to this completely overwhelming location. And I've been out here just wandering around for, I don't know, maybe the last hour or so with, uh, with my telephoto, 100 to 200, just looking for little vignettes. This absolutely, incredibly overwhelming location. I don't even know exactly what I'm even looking for or if I'm even looking for anything in particular. I know one thing, I'm just trying to really look for shapes to start with. And there's just so many different possibilities here. It's just, well, I guess that's why you come to these locations well in advance of, uh, of sunrise or sunset. It's about probably like two and a half hours before the sun sets. So I have plenty of time to kind of scout out exactly what I'm, gonna, what I'm looking to do or try and figure out what I'm looking to do, I guess. <laughs> and uh, the light is way too harsh right now anyway to, to really do much, but this is a great opportunity to try and figure out what the game plan is, try and find that composition so when the light does get soft and kind of drops over this ridge line, then I'll have a composition in mind and I'll be ready to go. I think coming off the tripod is always critical. Well, especially when you have a long lens on. I feel like you're much more nimble. I mean, I feel like you're always much more nimble when you're not on the tripod, but I feel like if you're composition scouting and you're definitely gonna be using a long lens, it's almost imperative that you, you do that freehand. Not freehand, I guess free tripod. And just kind of move around a little bit. You're just more apt to try more things out as opposed to if you're locked down on the tripod and you're just kind of loosening your ball head and just moving it around to the left and to the right. But doing it like this, I feel like it's the only way to go. I feel like I could just sit here for days and just continually search for these compositions. But I don't have days, I only have a few hours. But I think one of the things that's most unique about this location is the different triangular shapes. And that's really what I'm trying to isolate because whenever I use a, a longer focal length, I think that's kind of the first thing that I'm looking for, just interesting shapes, interesting patterns, because I get in this kind of abstract mindset whenever I have this long lens on. And these hoodoos here are all, they, every one of them has this kind of triangular upward shape. So I'm just trying to find a, a nice assortment of them. I definitely want to find some that are kind of spattered in snow because that is definitely interesting. And the ones in the far distance seem to be the ones that are in shade, so therefore they have the most snow. So I'm really gonna try and, and focus on those and uh, see if I can pick out some kind of detail in the distant, uh, in the distant landscape here. It just started to snow a little bit out there in the distance and it just created the most ethereal, just kind of soft atmosphere out there and that little bit of light, just kissing all of the, the sides of the hoodoos out there and the trees and just kind of making the snow just absolutely glow. I'm gonna get a couple shots of this real quick. You know, I've been getting a lot of questions lately as to why I don't use lens hoods more often. And I actually do, it just seems that uh, I just don't in the videos, but I very rarely ever do when I'm using a, a longer lens though, mainly because the lens hood on longer lens is usually really, really large. And if there's any kind of wind, those larger lens hoods turn into like sails and it creates so much vibration. 
and it's uh, a lot of times it's hard to get a uh, a, a crisp a crisp shot when uh, when you have a lens hood on. I know sometimes it's uh, sometimes you have to have it, but uh, if you are shooting in a kind of a, a windier situation and you do have to use a lens hood if it's snowing or something like this, maybe I should use a lens hood. I would definitely turn on your uh, optical image stabilization. I have mine on right now as well. And it's not super windy. It kind of comes in, in gusts a little bit, but the lens hood on this 100 to 200 is absolutely gigantic here. I'll show it to you right now. See what I mean? It's just absolutely huge and it just adds, I mean, that's, that's longer than 50% of the lens. So, I mean, it just adds so much additional length to the overall lens itself and just, uh, creates a situation that could potentially result in more camera shake and that is never a good thing. So, oh man, that sun really came out. Hopefully I'm not overexposed, but one thing I do like to do with a, uh, do like to do, <laughs> to do with a longer lens is, I mean, I think we all know that lens, you get that kind of compression effect, but I like to try and look for layers in the, uh, in the, in the landscape because I think that gives you the opportunity to kind of pull those together and that makes for a more unique composition. Let me record what I'm doing right now in the camera. But as you can see, there's, well, obviously I'm not gonna be able to point to it, but there's these pillars in the, uh, the bottom left-hand corner and I guess towards the, uh, the bottom right-hand corner, and that's kind of the foreground interest. And then you have it drop off and then in the upper right-hand corner, you have those layers as well too. And by using a longer focal length, you're able to pull those together to make a much more interesting photograph as opposed to like if you shot this with a, a wide angle lens, it would lose all of that kind of grandiose feeling of that compression. And I think that that, that compressing nature or that illusion, compressing illusion that the, the telephoto lens creates is what makes these types of um, images uh, very compelling to me and very uh, interesting because it's something that uh, you're, you can't really see with your naked eye. And I think any type of a any type of a photograph that you create that is unique from the uh, the focal length that we normally see on a day-to-day -day basis with our with our naked eyes is automatically going to be interesting just in itself right there And just to give you some frame of reference, this is uh, what the wide angle view would look like. I'm filming this on my uh, X-T4 on a 10 to 24 millimeter lens, zoomed all the way into 24 millimeters, it's a crop sensor camera. But there's that composition there, that kind of V, that was the foreground area, and then the background area, and it just, it looks completely different on this lens, on this focal length, as it does, as opposed to the, uh, the telephoto lens. And I think that that's one of the most unique aspects of using a longer focal length is exactly how you can kind of pull distant things together, or I guess I should say, at least create that illusion that you're pulling things together and it makes it for a very interesting image. Man, it is so dry out here. I have, I have consumed more water in the last two hours than I probably have in the last day, but uh, man, it's cold out here, but I, uh, I started to kind of move back and forth along this ridge line a little bit just to see if I could find a different area that I might enjoy shooting or find something a little bit different. But I keep coming back to the same overlook because the, the grouping uh, that I like the most is best viewed from this location. But I just slipped it into a vertical orientation and I found something else that uh, is a little bit, I shouldn't say more enticing, but it makes a great uh, complementary composition here. I'll show you what it is right now. So before I show you through the camera, let's kind of describe it real quick. It's just kind of like this, this sweeping nature, almost looks like a dragon's tail that comes from like, I guess the bottom center area, kind of sweeps out to the right, kind of points to this interesting feature in the background. Let me switch this to movie and show you right now. So there it is, it kind of, eh, ho hopefully you can see it. I wish I could point far enough out there to where you could see it, but I guess this is kind of where that sweeping area is, right through there from the bottom center sweeps up and around and then it kind of points to that grouping in the center area right through there but uh, it almost looks like two eyes like a skeleton skull almost and uh, I, i'm envisioning kind of dodging and burning just to kind of show that uh that sweeping nature a little bit more because i'll be able to, to to bring that out a little bit if i darken down the shadows kind of bring up the highlight areas a little bit just to kind of draw the viewer's eye to the the composition that uh, i'm envisioning and it's something i always try and do on location is envision what I think I want to do with it from a post-processing perspective. It doesn't always work out, but I think when, when you can do that, 
I think it uh, is a great way because it helps you visualize or conceptualize the composition that you're trying to go for. And it uh, just helps me to, to kind of do that and come to figure out exactly the post-processing aspect of it because I guess I'm kind of rambling a little bit right now. I'm having a hard time describing exactly what I mean here. But just having an idea of how you want to post-process something while you're composing it is definitely something that will help you refine that composition and kind of help you to envision what that end result looks like. I made that pretty hard. <laughs> So before the best light arrives, I figured I'd play with this a little bit, but I'm not sure if you can see that composition. I'll brighten it up a little bit there for you. Oops, other way. There's a kind of little scrub bush right there. It's a little patch of snow, although the snow's not coming in the, it's not showing up in the image, but that little, little scrub bush there. Once again, I don't know the name of it, but it's uh, dormant or it's dead, one or the other. But uh, and it's, it's acting as some kind of foreground interest but there it is right there. It's, uh, I definitely like the telephoto images much better because the sky isn't, it's, uh, it's starting to get a little bit dramatic, but it's not quite enough to, uh, I don't know. It's interesting, it's hard to tell these kind of things sometimes until you get the, the photos back home and post. So while I'm waiting for the, uh, the light to soften up just a little bit, I did want to uh, make mention of one thing. I was just at the uh, Outsiders Conference in Kanab, Utah, and I was giving a talk, and I brought up something called shooting for the crop. And I think it's very important, especially when you're using longer focal lengths. And basically what it is, uh, you might have heard it called composing for the crop as well. But uh, it's very important, I believe, whenever you're using longer focal lengths, because longer focal lengths, you generally have a tighter composition. And if you get your composition completely dialed in exactly how you're envisioning it, shooting for the crop would basically, or what you should do if you want to shoot for the crop, is just zoom out a little bit, or maybe just take it one step back, just to create a little bit of additional latitude around the edges of your frame. And the thinking is that in case you get back home in post and you want to make any kind of cropping decisions at that point, if you frame it so tight, you're not going to have that real estate to be able to do that. So I always shoot for the crop or compose for the crop, but I always make sure I do it with a longer focal length. It's not quite as imperative on a, um, when you're using wider, wider focal lengths, but um, definitely when you want to use longer focal lengths. So just something I just thought about, wanted to make sure that I had mentioned that as well. I find composing a longer focal length to be substantially more relaxing than wide angle, mainly because you just don't have such a wide field of view, so you're not trying to cram so much, or you don't have to worry about so many different components in your composition. You have a much narrower field of view, so there's usually just a couple things in your scene. So I've had an absolute ball up here, just sitting up here and just moving along this ridge line back and forth and just finding little vignettes in this scene. I think this is by far the most relaxing style of photography is longer focal length photography in a scene just like this where you can stay up here for hours and just look for just tiny little little slices of heaven in all of these little areas here. It's just been, I'm sure you can probably hear it in my voice. I'm probably sounding a little bit giddy right now, but uh, it's been a good day. Very happy, very happy. So the light's getting really, really nice right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up. I'm working on a really good composition that I, I just discovered just a few moments ago, which I, I can't believe I just noticed it right now. So I'm pretty excited about that. But I do want to, um, before I wrap things up, I just wanna say a real big thanks to the sponsor of this week's video, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio design and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. 
With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends in page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog post and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I do hope you enjoy this week's video. If you have any questions about the, anything related to, to the video, anything uh, best practices in regards to telephoto landscape photography, uh, please leave them in the comment section below and I guarantee, or I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as I possibly can. And if you did enjoy this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends if you did enjoy it that much. I would greatly appreciate it. And any additional photos that I get here in the next probably 20 or 30 minutes while there is some good light, I will be sure to post at the end of this week's video. So as always, thank you all so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye. So actually, I just found one more composition. Sorry if the audio seems a little bit different. My, uh, my lab mic died, so I'm using the uh, uh, shotgun mic on top of the camera. But I found this, this image here. I got the, my wide 23 millimeter prime, really, really close to these, uh, these roots in the foreground here, using kind of like that forced perspective. It's not really the typical type of image that I go for, but I really like the way that's coming out. I'll show you what it looks like right now. All right, so down here. Light's getting pretty good right now, but there it is. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. And if it does turn out all right, I'll definitely put the uh, the final version on the screen. But as you can see, the the lens is very very close to the roots in the foreground there, and kind of using those as a a little bit of this snow, these kind of like leading lines right here made by the roots and the snow in between the roots. And that kind of draws the viewer's eye into the scene. We'll see if it works out. I'm having to focus stack this quite a bit. I'm doing a, probably three shots for the branches, four shots for the branches, and then one for the background. Probably could get away with three for the branches, one for the background, but I want to make sure I get it all just to be safe. Review them, make sure they're all tack sharp. <laughs>